Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightsLVR.com. In this video, we're going to be talking about using HDRIs in Unreal Engine 5. A lot of the tutorials that show how to use HDRIs don't show a lot of the more advanced features that I find I'm constantly needing, so I figured I'd make my own tutorial. I'll show you how to light with an HDRI. I'll also show you how to use one HDRI for the background and a different one to light. I'll show you how to increase the brightness of your background without affecting your lighting and vice versa. And we'll go over a lot of the common issues when using HDRIs in Unreal Engine, like black background, no lighting, and fireflies, which are those little white specks you see when using path tracing. Okay, let's jump in. So first, let's go to polyhaven.com slash HDRIs, and we'll download a few HDRIs. I'm going to download the Belfast Sunset and a few more. When you download an HDRI, make sure that you use the HDR mode. For whatever reason, Unreal does not work with EXRs. So choose your resolution, HDR, and then download. In Unreal, I'm going to create a new folder. I'll just call this HDRIs. And then in this folder, I'm going to click and drag in a few of my HDRIs. I'm going to delete my HDRI backdrop. We'll just start from scratch. I'm going to turn off this sky sphere for now. We don't need it. First, go to Edit, Plugins. Search for HDRI Backdrop. If you don't have it enabled, go ahead and enable it and then restart. With it enabled, you can go to this little cube here, go down to Lights, HDRI Backdrop, and add that to your scene. And I'm going to select the HDRI Backdrop. I'm gonna drag it up to my environment just so it's all organized. And then here, I'm going to go to the top. I'm just gonna zero this out, zero, zero, zero. And you can already see my first issue, which is I have the HDRI backdrop in there, but it's black. You might have this for a few different reasons. If you're using path tracing and ray tracing, then most likely what you have to do is come down to geometry, search for ray, and then turn off visible and ray tracing. So once you do that, now you're getting the light in your scene. That's looking better. So well, let's just uh, take a look at this here. Now, one thing to know is when we switch into path tracing, we'll need to enable this. So you can see I've actually edited the blueprint to, to, to give me basically a cheat sheet here. You can do that yourself if you want to change this underscore ray so you don't forget. You can go to edit and blueprint. You can check, check on geometry and then you can rename it here to whatever you want and then compile, save, and then you'll have this cheat here that'll tell you you need to, uh, this is where you type in Ray. <laughs> so now if I click back on the HDRI backdrop and we go back to the parent self here, you can see it looks a little strange. It's projected all weird. And depending on what your scene is, you will have to change these projection settings. You can change the size of the HDRI backdrop and if I zoom out here, you can see exactly what I'm doing here. You can changing the size of this dome. And then you can change the projection center. So you can move this further out. You can also click on the projection center and then drag this as you need to. And then depending on your HDRI or your scene or whatever, you will need to affect this in many different ways. And depending on where your camera is, it also will affect these things. The other thing you can do is use camera projection. So if I use camera projection, then no matter where I'm at, it's going to project the same way. A lot of times, use camera projection is fine. For this tutorial, that's all I'm going to use. So now I want to zoom in here so we can see these reflections before we start talking about the rest of these things. So. The HDRI backdrop actually has two different places that light. So you have this HDRI backdrop, and if you go up here, we have this approaching storm 4K. This is the cube map. This is lighting our scene. So changing the intensity changes the light. So we'll set this back to one. And now if we go to skylight, this also affects our scene. And if we change the intensity here, you can see this changes. And sometimes you want to just search for effect and just turn off the effects world. I actually don't use this method and I'll show you why. What I do here is I actually change the source type to specified cube map. 
and then I search for the same HDRI if I'm using the default HDRI, so in this case approaching storm, and now these two are the same. So you have the backdrop approaching storm 4K, the skylight approaching storm 4K, right now they're both at one. The reason I do this is now what you can do is if I click on the, ba the backdrop, I can turn the intensity down or up so I can change the background and it's not affecting our lighting. So actually let me just exaggerate this. I'm going to make the background brighter and then I'm going to select on the skylight and then I'm going to change the intens intensity down so I can change the lighting independently of the background brightness. And this is always important for me because my background brightness and the, the, the lighting intensity are almost always never exactly the same. And you'll see this more when I drag in a different HDRI. So now let's drag in, um, let's do this Belfast sunset. So skylight is for lighting and you can see I've edited the blueprint to say lighting. And this backdrop, the cell phone here, this one is for the background. We can use a different background for our backdrop, and let me turn the intensity back down to one, and now we're using the lighting and reflections from this skylight lighting, okay, the approaching storm, and our backdrop is a different HDRI. So, if, and you can see this, if I, if I come into the, the reflection capture here, you can see it's not the same HDRI. Now this is sort of a dramatic effect just so we can see the difference. You, obviously this wouldn't be a great idea to light with a completely different background, but it's a good example to show you how it works. Another thing while we're here, if I click back on skylight lighting, you can see that this resolution is not very sharp. And you can change that by going to the cube map resolution. And I'm gonna increase this to 1024. That looks like it's gonna be as sharp as, it, as it's gonna get for now. But if we go down to the extremes, if I go to 16, you can see that this is not enough resolution for the cube map resolution. Um, unless this is the style you're going for. If you want the reflection to be blurry, this is actually a, a good way to cheat that. Let's go back up to, let's go to 1024. And you can notice this doesn't actually affect the quality of the light. So even if this is at eight, the lighting quality still looks pretty good. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna go back to 1024. So now I'm going to bring the Belfast sunset onto our skylight cube map so that you can see a real example. So we have the same HDRI for our backdrop and our skylight, but let's say we wanna rotate the background. We have to make sure that we rotate these at the same time, and I'll show you what I mean. To change the rotation of the lighting and, and reflections, go to skylight, source cube map angle, and drag. If I just rotate the skylight, we'll see in the reflection here, that the lighting and reflections are changing, but the background is not. So let's change this to 180, just for dramatic effect. So if you change the cube map from one, you most likely want to change the rotation of the other. So let's go up here, and if we go to rotation Z, change this to 180. Now our backdrop, and our reflections and lighting match up. If you want to use the lighting and reflections from the HDRI, but you don't want to use the backdrop, the easiest thing to do is to go to Geometry, search for Visible, and just turn off the background. And if I turn on the sky sphere, you can see now we have the HDRI giving our lighting and reflections, and a different sky, in this case the sky sphere, as the background. And this can be really helpful, especially if you have a dynamic sky with clouds moving and that sort of thing, but you still want to light with an HDRI, which is very common uh, for me. That's definitely one way you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and turn off our sky sphere, and I'm going to turn on our backdrop here. Now let's look at path tracing, because when I switch to path tracing, this is going to change everything. So if I go up to here to lit, path tracing. If you don't have path tracing enabled, then you'll need to enable that. And you can notice right away probably a few things, but the first thing I noticed was that the background went away. And to change that, you go to the geometry and search for ray, and then visible and ray tracing, turn that on. So now we have, it's visible in 
our ray tracing. I'm going to drag in a different HDRI to show a specific issue that you will run into if you're using HDRIs and path tracing. So I'm going to drag in this forest one. Um, let me cr crank up the intensity a little bit. So in this example, you can see, it might be hard to see on the screen, but if I go into this black area, you'll see it a little better. You can see all these white dots. These are called fireflies. I'm not going to explain what they are, but just know that if you see a bunch of white dots and, and white specks, these are called fireflies. And there's a very simple fix to fix this. And you can see when it finishes rendering, it goes away. You can see while we're rendering, you see all these fireflies everywhere. I'm gonna to go to my post process volume, search for samples, path tracing, I'm just gonna turn this down to 10 to exaggerate the effect. So you can see while we're moving around, there's a lot of fireflies and then when we stop, they go away. If I search for denoise and I turn this off, you'll see that we still have all these fireflies. And when I go to render, I'm not gonna use Unreal's denoiser for various reasons. That's another tutorial on it, all, on, all on itself. So if I turn off this denoiser, I can really see these fireflies. To get rid of these fireflies, there's a few different things you could do. Denoising does it, but that's not the way you should do it. So with the post process volume selected, search for max path exposure. You get this max path exposure here. So if I so select this and I go down to one, you can see the fireflies almost went completely away. I can go down further to point one. You can see they're almost gone. So here's, here's at 30, here's at one. So one is probably a little extreme. I usually go maybe like three is probably a good number. And now if I add more samples, it's easier to see if I set the pixels to 100. So I'm gonna set the pixels to 100 here and let's go back to max path. And here is 30, and if I go down to one, you can see without denoising, I've gotten rid of all the fireflies. One is, is usually not enough. You need something a little bit more than one. So I usually like to go to three or so. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, but on my screen I can see that there's still a lot of fireflies. If I go back to samples, let's see if just adding samples will fix that. So it looks like, yeah, it looks like, you know, probably around 300 samples or so, it completely gets rid of the fireflies. So this is something that is a, is a common issue in all rendering programs, but this is the way that you fix it in Unreal. All right, that's going to wrap up this tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I hope this was really helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next one.